you'll be able to tell by, from my accent that I'm a local. Well, I've, um, I've become a local. I've been here about four years, and um, uh, I, as Mark was saying, I'm a professor in the College of Education. And the business that I've got in the research park, um, which is based in the research park, which is called Common Ground Publishing, um, is a kind of a bipolar business, and I'm going to tell you how it's bipolar in a moment. It, it's a deal, it, it sort of slips between a couple of um, big contradictions. Um, one side of the contradiction is you've got to have money to keep paying the bills. That's one side of it. And the other side is we're doing stuff which is speculative, blue sky, um, difficult to quantify, innovating, mucking around with technologies, and um, it's a difficult balancing act to go between one pole and the other. But what's the business? Well, we, we summarise the game as what we call knowledge ecologies. So um, in a world um, where, for example, in universities, uh, people do their science or they do their psychology or they, they do their history or they do all sorts of things, um, that stuff doesn't become knowledge until it gets published and students read it and other researchers read it. And a crucial part of the knowledge process is a set of steps towards publication and then a set of processes to disseminating those publications. Now, out there in the world, we have two models for how you do this, neither of which are satisfactory. Model number one is called the Internet and Open Access, which is um, the gift economy, where you just put it up there and you give it away. It's a hell of a lot of work to do it. Um, a lot of people aren't amateur publishers and a lot of academics spend a lot of their time mucking around with PDFs and finding referees and doing all sorts of silly stuff which they're not really qualified to do. So that's one model, open access. The other model is that it's an industry which is worth 20-something billion dollars a year um, around the world and four or five very big companies which are faceless, nameless companies, people won't know them. Um, the biggest company is Elsevier which is a Dutch-based company. Charge this university and other universities rip off prices for content they got for nothing. So it's a business model which people are cranky with because it's slow, it's expensive, it's big companies stealing knowledge and then taking huge amounts of money for it. Um, and these companies are intensely disliked by people who know how they operate, the authors and whatever. So what we've tried to do is set up a lightweight commercial model which is not naive about the gift economy, it's not as if we can do this stuff for nothing, but is efficient, effective, competitive in running the knowledge ecology uh, and running that process. So that's what our philosophy is. So what are the two sides of our, um, our bipolar lives? Um, I'll talk about the speculative side first. Um, the speculative side is we're building a cloud computing type environment which will manage that process much more effectively. Um, and what it does, it abolishes the world of emails and file attachments and whatever, and it puts all document creation back into a web space where the people who are talking about the content can talk about it in that space. Um, um, and it's more efficient, it's quicker, it's cheaper. Knowledge will get out quicker and it'll be a more effective knowledge ecology. That's our business. And we've spent actually quite a few million dollars in building what we've got. We're now into a version three and we have quite a lot of users of our version 2 and the version 3 we hope to be releasing later in the year. Uh, and we have a team of, a little IT team of four or five developers in the research park who are doing this stuff. But we've got to pay the bills. And how do we pay the bills? And um, what we have is a sort of a relative, a pretty focused um, uh, plan around just cash, getting money in the door. And in fact, we have a little 10-point plan. We've said, look, there are 10 possible places where we can get money. We get money from some of these places, and we have to, every month, think about each 10 of these places. One place is we get grants. So we happen to have got, I'm an academic, I know how to write proposals. Um, I've, we've got a couple of million dollars worth of um, proposals from, you know, we put in research grants and we've got R&D grants. That's one form of revenue. Another form of revenue is we run conferences, so people come to our conferences, they present their papers and we publish them and we've got a whole web-based environment through which we do that. We've got a whole pile of content. We're just about to, we're not far off publishing our 12,000 academic article. Um, and um, how do we sell that content effectively? 
So we're, we're, we're trying to, and look, a lot of this stuff we do really, really badly, I might say. Our content is worth a lot more than what we get for it. Um, because it's something which is growing very quickly, and how does one deal with the business implications of growing very quickly? So we have a, a pretty, um, a focus on the ideas and the innovation and the, the big picture stuff about how the world might be different if we can create more effective knowledge ecologies. But also, we have to just pragmatically and realistically be constantly focused on revenue objectives. And, you know, um, Mark talks about failure. We are actually failing at a lot of them, and we expect to fail fatally at some of them, but we try them all, and um, it's a system, it's a sort of an atmosphere where everything we do, if we succeed at some things, that'll be great, and some things we know we're going to fail at. So we've got to kind of build a, a mix of success and failure. So what I've described to you is firstly a completely contradictory bipolar personality where we're sort of one, mo one moment thinking ideas and creativity and I don't know where that fits in terms of the market. The next minute we're aggressively thinking about the market and for goodness sake how do we get money to keep paying the bills. Um, so we, we're dealing with um, an environment where there are a lot of sort of tensions and contradictions in what we do. Um, and we're also dealing with something where we expect to succeed at some things and some things we may fail at and we've got to be open to failure and we've got to learn from that failure and move on to something else. So um, they're all difficult contradictions and tensions to deal with but it sort of gives you a, probably gives you a sense of the kind of, um, the way we feel every day, the kind of psychology that we have when we approach every day. So I, that's a little... A, a short introduction to, to what we're what we're doing, and there's if you want to know more, we've got a website which has lots of stuff on it, information on it. Thank you, Bill. So, as I said this evening, you're going to get a chance to meet all kinds of people from this. Uh...